as a partner previously and been part of Microsoft's Voices for Innovation. And we had learned to do um, tech policy advocacy through that organization. So I kind of applied those skills to talk into leadership in Ghana for the current administration, as well as what may be the incoming administration. Um, All right, cool. So yeah, we've been, we've been exploring that route. And then we were talking at the universities and um, going to conferences and such. So that's another thing that increased our visibility um, and helped us join a, um, a business group called Tech Connect in Ghana. Um, and that's part of, um, it's partly government officials, um, mostly business owners and business leadership, um, some policy makers that are not really government officials, more advocates, um, and then um, university staff. Welcome everyone to the Safe Collab Space. I am Amy Cisse, and today we have Nakia Carter. Nakia, thank you so much for being here with me today. And thanks, Amy. Glad to be here. Yes, it is always wonderful connecting with you because you always have great and wonderful things going on. So can you please share with us? Let's just start off with where you have been moving to and from. Let's start there. Okay. Yeah. So when Amy and I met, we were in the D.C. area. So we met in the DMV. I was living in Virginia at the time, but I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland. Um, and then I got hired by Microsoft um, after um, selling my first Microsoft company um, and went to work for a partner. Then I went to work for Microsoft and they hired me at um, HQ. So I had to be moved from Virginia to Washington State. So I'm in Washington State now um, at the moment. Um, but I've also been to Ghana and I've been living there for a little bit. Um, so how that kind of happened is um, um, we wanted to um, do a bit more than we've been doing in our business. So we, we my co-CEO and I, uh, we started a new NTC um, tech, new Microsoft partner business. Um, and we were looking around for you know, our technical talent and such, but we were also trying to find ways on how we could help our community um, as African-Americans, as Blacks, um, or Africans worldwide. Um, so one of the things that we wanted to do was visit Africa and see you know, the, the, the richness, the people, the culture, you know, experience all that but also see what kind of business opportunities that there may be there um, and what kind of help that they may need, especially since um, African countries like Ghana had been asking for African-Americans um, and Africans from the diaspora to come back home and help with certain things. So we wanted to come back and help with tech. So we decided to um, visit the country, you know, see the people, um, start um, networking with folks and seeing where we can get. Uh, where we can go with that. So when we went, um, we did a lot of business, um, a lot of business interactions, met with a bunch of people. Um, we decided that the country was one that we wanted to, to help and we wanted to come back to and it seemed to be a good fit for our family. Um, so we, after that short vacation, it was about a two week vacation there where we, we, we basically picked the Airbnb and the least touristy spot that we could find. Um, we were out there with the people doing all types of stuff. So it was very interesting. But um, when we came back for the second time, we started getting invited to do things. Um, one of those things was I got to invited to speak at the University of Cape Coast um, in Ghana. And um, while we were there, since we were at the university, we were talking to the students and talking to the faculty and um, the, the people um, attending that conference. And we realized that the technical talent there was basically the same or greater than it is in the U.S. In the U.S., where you you know now you can kind of skip kind of skip some steps. You can you don't have to get your bachelor's degree. You don't have to get an associate's. If you had those experience and some certificates, that normally is good enough to help you get along um, in the states, or at least it's trending that way for a lot of technical um, jobs. But in Ghana, um, you still have to go through getting your bachelor's degree before you even think about getting a certificate. Um, but then they also have programs to help you get internships 
um, and things at different companies. So we saw that the talent there um, was largely untapped, um, eager and willing to learn, um, still picking up lots of great skills in robotics and AI um, and cloud computing and big data. Um, so across the whole board of everything that we are used to um, in the tech industry, um, they have uh, picked up all those skills and are continually teaching each other and bringing up the next generation of folks to um, be in the tech industry. So um, being with that, and then we also um, uh, started um, networking with business owners as well as you know faculty for school. And then also um, added in some government officials so that we can start talking about tech policy. As a partner previously, I've been part of Microsoft's Voices for Innovation, and we had learned to do um, tech policy advocacy through that organization. So I kind of applied those skills to talk into leadership in Ghana for the current administration, as well as what may be the incoming administration. Um, Very cool. So yeah, we've been we've been exploring that route. Heavily. That's awesome. So, okay, so you live, you went there for two weeks, you picked the Airbnb in a less touristy spot. Let's talk about the food. What dish did you like the most? Uh, okay, my favorite is fufu. Okay. Fufu and light chicken soup or um, the green one, which I don't even know what that one's called because I only had it once. But oh my goodness! Um, Do you and like you, okra or igusi. Oh, I, I still don't like okra, but they they love okra over there. But I still don't like okra. Um, I like okra if it's stewed or fried, um, stewed in tomatoes or fried. Um, but the way they they do it, they do it with the the the, the you know the the naturalness of the slime and no. The sauce. Yep, <laughs> and it's spicy. Yes. I, 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 they say it's spicy. I have no idea because I'm not going to taste it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I love um, fufu because it's it's kind of like mashed potatoes, but it's also like doughy. Um, and then you use your hands to eat. So you, um, you know, you use a bit of fufu and you pick up your soup or you dip it in your soup. And it's, yes, it's very tasty. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you feel? Um, it was for you as it relates to moving around and traveling throughout Ghana? Um, well, at first it was kind of difficult because um, the infrastructure there is uh, for the roads and such are, you know, really good in the touristy spots. But like I said, I was not in a touristy spot. So the road was not all that great in, in, in a lot of places. Um, but, but it's easy to catch a ride. Um, with folks, there's lots of people um, that'll be honking at you when you're walking down the street uh, to see if you want to get a ride. You can get a ride on a bike. I actually rode on the bike of a motorcycle as um, one of the one of the um, rides that I did. Um, but then later we got a car, um, so then we had to buy a get no not buy we had to get a driver. Um, we had a driver that we would just hire every once in a while, but then we hired a um, a permanent driver. Um, and then they made things a bit easier, but because the roads, like I said, aren't aren't the best, you have to leave out earlier and there's a lot of traffic jams on certain times. So you got to get those timings down. It's like living in DC, except for the roads are smooth in DC, <laughs> but you still all the, got all the traffic. You still got all the, uh, you know, unexpected things that happen. You still got all these people popping up all over the place, so. Okay. <laughs> people popping up all over the place, it's funny. So what about from a, a tech perspective, how did you feel, um, how easy was it for you to get those connections from a tech perspective and from a business perspective? From a business perspective, uh, it was pretty easy being that we were there on the ground. Um, Ghana and a lot of African countries, they're still very in-person-y. Um, they don't like as much of the virtual meetings, especially initially. They like to see you there. They like to hold, grab your hand, shake your hand, you know, talk to you for a while, um, know where you're living. So we actually can point out where we where we have a house. We have our houses in the Fenya, which is near Tema. Um, so they want to know that you're there. You're with the people. Um, you're not going to be a person that's just going to come in, do whatever, and then leave back out. They want to know that they can trust you. Um, so 
it's easier when you go there, you spend some time, you get to networking with people. Um, you just talk to people because a lot of people know things that you might not even think that person knows. Um, and next thing you know, you're connected to somebody else. Um, so because we got so good at networking, I guess that part helped. Part being American also helped, but it really helped that we were there um, and we were with everybody and everybody could see we were highly visible. Um, and then we were talking at the universities and um, going to conferences and such. So that's another thing that increased our visibility um, and helped us join a, um, a business group called Tech Connect in Ghana. Um, and that's part of... Um, it's partly government officials, um, mostly business owners and business leadership, um, some policy makers that are not really government officials, more advocates, um, and then um, university staff uh, like the uh, president of um, president of um, University of Ghana um, Tech Tech Center, the technical part of University of Ghana. I can't remember what they're um, exactly named, but um, just to give an example. Okay. And because we're in the Microsoft space, you know, I have to ask, do, do you see a lot of Microsoft usage? Oh, yes. yes. It is different though. So in Ghana, at least, I'm not sure about other African countries at this moment, even though we've gotten invited to others, we haven't visited them yet. Um, they have a lot of Microsoft in the government space and in the enterprise space. So every government agency that we went and talked to, NIST, you know, the diaspora and office, um, the Office of Communications, the Office of the Presidency, they all had Office 365. Um, most of them buy one Microsoft partner. So they had a specific Microsoft partner that like built this solution on top of Office 365 specifically for government. Um, so a lot of them were on that with that partner. Um, but then enterprise also on Office 365, um, using Azure, building um, apps in um, um, Azure AI and things like that, or using the, you know, the apps hosted in Azure, uh, as well as using Microsoft 365. The issue it comes in where, and where we want to spread this a bit more is down into the SMB space. So the M of the SMC space, they may also have Office 365 because, you know, corporate SMB is small, mid-sized business. SMC is small, mid-sized corporate business tends to be smaller, have less revenue than corporate entities, even though they might be the same size. Um, a corporate entity will usually have way more revenue, make way more profit than an SMB. Um, so those the medium sized ones, they may also have Office 365, but what we're finding is that um, a lot of the business owners and such, they want to adopt it, but they can't afford to adopt it because of the price point. Um, it's a US based price point, And we started talking to Microsoft about how we could possibly, you know, get some regional changes or appropriate um, pricing for the area, hopefully for the whole continent. Um, but you know those things are still in talks. But they are highly, they want to use um, the 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 um, Microsoft products, um, and a lot of the bigger entities are. Um, it's just you know need to get it into the hands of those um, the S and the M, especially in the B side of the, of the equation. Yeah, that's a good point. So, do you, is there a community days organized event out there as well? Or not sure. Um, well, there, there is not a community days organized event as far as so. Um, I recently became a Microsoft Microsoft Global Communities Initiative um, regional lead for EMEA, um, or for MIA. Sorry, not EMEA, MIA, or Middle and uh, Middle East and Africa, um, because of the tech community that we run out of Ghana. Now it's an online tech community. It's called a Nancy Tech. Um, if you visit my LinkedIn, um, uh, you know, the slash N slash Nakia T Carter, no spaces, no punctuations not, or anything, just Nakia T Carter. Um, and you look on the the companies that I have, there will be one called a Nancy Tech. That is our community, our tech community. 
like I said, it's online. It's based in Ghana, so it's based on Ghana's time zones, but you can still attend. Um, the next one is Saturday, um, this coming Saturday. So we started doing Saturdays instead of Thursdays is where we started um, to see if we can get more people to come because of the schedules, because of people trying to get home. And like I said, those roads are not the easiest to navigate trying to get back home in the traffic. Um, so we're trying a different day. But there is that community where we um, are um, spreading Microsoft uh, tech, mostly Office 365, Power Platform, um, but also technical career advice. Um, since we get a lot of young people, Ghana is a very young population, so is all of Africa. Um, so a lot of the generations that are coming into the workforce are a lot younger. So we're helping with um, spreading the Microsoft um, uh, tech knowledge um, throughout these folks that attend. Um, and then we have, of course, our speakers that um, come from like the Tech Connect group and other places, as well as from Microsoft and um, folks from our own staff. Okay. So like a user group, um, build up the community. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like yeah, that. They just don't call them user groups um, over there. That, that So we call it tech community. Um, and then they understand that, but they don't really understand user group. But yes, exactly. That's exactly what it is. Okay. Okay. Good to know for sure. So um, that sounds like, I mean, it sounds like you had an amazing experience in Ghana. Do you feel like you would ever want to move back and just live there what are your, or just keep going back and forth? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, yes, definitely. Uh, we were there for um, about nine months. Loved every minute of it. Um, can't wait to go back. Um, yes. And we also like to be over there so that we can, um, even though our folks are highly technical, um, we like to be close to our team so we can manage them more effectively, give them, you know, um, more personable tips and, you know, meet them in person and, you know, go out for camaraderie and all of that stuff. Uh, so we like to also be there for that as well. But yes, I, I miss Ghana. I want to, <laughs> want to go It'll back. be a good excuse to keep going back then. <laughs> Got to yes. meet the team, yeah. right? Have a great excuse. In person. Yes, I have a great excuse. Keep going back and forth. Exactly. So do you want to talk a little bit about your consulting services? That would be great. Yeah. So just talking you. about the team and mm -hmm. how does that all come together? Yeah. So... Um, NTC Tech, we're based out of Washington State, um, and we basically help organizations make their data safer and compliant, help them to work better together, get more done, improve their workflow processes, and make smarter business decisions. And we do this because we have consulting and strategy, as well as implementation and migration services, so we can help you get there, as well as development and training services. Um, and I think I mentioned earlier, Earlier, we're a Microsoft shop, and we mostly focus on Microsoft Office 365, building things in Power Platform, um, as well as intranet development. Um, we have um, folks that can help with dynamic CRM um, and folks that can build things with Microsoft AI, like Azure AI. We also have Copilot Journey to help you get onto that journey of Copilot so that your AI doesn't give you crap in, crap out. Um, <laughs> and um, doesn't give you know, access to answers that people should not be getting access to. So we make sure all of those um, I's are dotted and T's are crossed before you even turn Copilot on. Um, and we work with related software and then we have a couple of other things outside of uh, Microsoft like business internet, HR, small business solutions, um, small business CRM solutions if Dynamics is too big for you or too expensive staff aug project management full code and mobile web application development website development technical writing and virtual assistance and the way we cover all of that is we have our us team but we are a larger part of our tech team comes from ghana as i said those those people are you know highly technical um, they're learning a lot uh, all the time they're hungry um, and they love microsoft technology so we have folks on our technical bench that um, is out of Ghana that works on, you know, Power Platform, builds the apps, all of those things. Um, our CTO even sits in Ghana. Um, he's the Ghanaian, uh, so he's over there now. Very cool. So what are some of the, 
I always say that, you know, it's like you're creating a, a fix to a problem, right? Usually when you're doing consulting services, that's usually the case. You're creating guidance. You're helping lead the client down a better path. So what are some of the solutions that you're offering or some of the challenges that you see where you offer a service to kind of fill that goal of reducing headaches? <laughs> well, there's a couple of them I'll point out. So one of them is for folks that already have Office 365 or Microsoft 365. You know, a lot of people went out and bought it during COVID. Um, and they might have used Teams just for the online meeting portion. They might not even know about the other side of Teams. Um, and they may probably use the email part. And maybe they use Office, you know, Word and PowerPoint and all of that. But then later they realize, oh, we need somewhere to store documents. So then they go get Basecamp or something like that. Or they were or using Dropbox. Teams. Or Dropbox, yes. <laughs> or <laughs> they were using Teams for only the internal online communication of chatting back and forth, but didn't know that they could use it for online meetings. So they ran out and got Zoom or go to meeting. Um, and Amy, you know, a lot of those licenses cost the same amount. Um, Office 365 can be the same amount and sometimes a little bit higher, but most of the time it's the same amount or cheaper than the license one license of like a base camp or one license of like a Zoom, um, especially Zoom. Um, I don't know if base camp has changed its prices um, recently, but I know it definitely for, for Zoom. Um, so, and you get way more things. So and it's all integrated. integrated. Yes, and it's all integrated. It all works together, talks together, um, out of the box. And of course you can add more um, things to it to make it work even better for you, which is the things that we do. Um, so we help folks to understand what they have, um, help them to um, streamline their licenses so that if they got too much stuff, um, make sure we right size their licenses, make sure that they're not buying other things that they shouldn't be buying. And then we can go into the process of helping um, folks, which is kind of the second um, problem that we, we kind of see of where folks have, um, they have, um, all these things that they have to do every day. They have all these business processes. They have all these things they're trying to track, um, trying to communicate back and forth with their clients, with their, you know, with their internal teams, with their external teams, with people that are working internally and externally um, in the company, possibly on the same team. Um, so we develop solutions to help folks be able to get that time back by um, streamlining their processes and then putting them online. Um, but before we even streamline them, we make sure we optimize them. What I mean by that is we get, you know, everybody involved in the process in a room and we say, hey, so what's the process? We ask each person and then let the argument begin, because usually that's when everybody's like, the process is A, B, the process is B, C, the process is one, two, three, you know, and all of them have these different ideas of what the process is. So before we even put it online, um, and we walk through the process, uh, whiteboard it out, make sure that it's the process that everybody agrees on. Um, of course, put in all those contingencies for folks are missing um, for um, like it's approval and that person's not there that day, you know, having a contingency to go to a different person, things like that. Um, but we put that process in an automated system with a dashboard so folks can also um, track where are things at, how is it going, you know, did, did it something fail, is somebody, is the um, uh, approval or whatever the process is, is it sitting in, on Bob's desk, <laughs> has Bob not looked at this for three days, um, or maybe even having, like I said, the automation push it along to the next person so that you don't even have to worry about if Bob is not here. Um, then it's going to go to the next person in line to do that approval or whatever the process flow is. Um, so helping folks know what they have, get the better return of investment where, you know, they could be having 20 percent during those COVID days. We help them to get up to 154 percent of investment when they use their whole suite. Um, but then we can help them even optimize even further by you know creating custom apps for their folks. We have customizable apps that we've already created, like time off requests, you know, simple things, um, expense reports, things like that. If you don't have 
um, that sort of service for your business. Um, so, you know, developing um, people's understanding of Office 365 and what it can do for them is one of the big problems that we help with. But also when they have it and they understand what they have, helping them to get more out of it, helping them to um, get solutions um, that are specific to their business uh, where, where it matters, um, the general applications where it doesn't matter as much, but um, giving them the ability to be able to get more done um, through optimization, through automation, um, that's the two big things that we, we help with. Okay. That sounds good. And what about your ideal client? Like, what does that profile look like? Yeah. So we have our ideal client, but um, as you probably know, Amy, Office 365 works for every business, even the one person shops, um, especially those that are one person shops that we've worked with before because we've had we have um, where they have like a bunch of customers. So they want a bunch of customer portals for their their um, upper clientele um, or they're like insurance and they didn't get anything from their insurance company. Um, at least back in the day. Now, the insurance companies are a little bit better about um, supplying portals for the insurance providers. Um, but back in the day, we used to um, create portals for those insurance companies' clients. Um, so, oh, crap. I just realized I, <laughs> I lost the question. I was going somewhere with it, and then it just, it just went away. No problem. We were talking about ideal clients. Because sometimes, oh, yes. right, like sometimes it's also about the way that they receive the information that you are giving them, right? Sometimes it's about them wanting to be open to new ways of working versus we want you to help us, but we want you to also tell us how to use this in an archaic way. And it's like, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to need you to come, come up a little bit. Um, yeah. So we definitely help folks help them try to come up. But yes, we definitely need folks that are in that mind frame of wanting to modernize, knowing that they have issues, um, seeing that their business is not as efficient as it could be, seeing that the collaboration is not that great, seeing that their employees are not happy. Because a lot of times employees are not happy because they have antiquated systems to deal with every day or lack of systems and then they have to do everything themselves which makes their the work so much harder they're not using their brain for the thing that they were actually there for they're using it for to do so much process work that it makes their life just hellacious and they want to go somewhere else um, so lots of places that have more modern tools are able to uh, track their employees um, and keep them for longer and have higher employee satisfaction. But to answer your question, but wait, answer, before, okay. before you, I have to make a point there because you touched on something that was very important, right? Knowing that you have a problem is so important. But then also, if you have an employee that came from another place and they mm -hmm. had all these, like you said, modern tools, and then you want them to revert back to archaic ways, they're like, I don't want to do that i know there's a better way i'm not technical but i know there's a better way and what you're asking me to do is just inefficient and mm. leadership has to be open to understanding and listening to say okay they're not happy let's be open to finding a better way so that was important exactly exactly and a lot of people don't think about their employees when it comes to you know modernization they forget that um you know, employees work there and they got to use what you're giving them to do the work. Um, yeah. Like you still trying to get people to use this old SharePoint 2010 farm, server farm environment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just let it go. <laughs> Just let it, yes, please, please let it go. Um, it is very, very past time to let that go. Um, <laughs> it's yes, exactly. Um, but to, to circle back around to your industry's question, um, some of the ones that we've been working with lately, construction, um, government, um, mostly um, uh, been looking at mostly state and local, although we can still do federal work, um, nonprofits, including education, um, civil engineering. We talked to, yeah, we had some manufacturing. Um, 
And the last one was um, healthcare, but mostly around healthcare policy. Um, so like those contractors or agencies that kind of look like a government agency, but not really a government agency, but they work so closely with the government agencies, develop policies for um, centers of Medicaid and Medicare for NIH. Um, although we've done work for both of those um, agencies as well. Okay, very cool. So you definitely have to share the links to the tech community uh, and your LinkedIn profile as well. Since you mentioned that earlier in the recording, what are some other ways people can get in contact with you? Um, well, some other ways. So there is the um, the our website, which is consult, C-O-N-S-U-L-T, and then NTC Tech. So consult ntctech.com. That is our website. Um, and of course, you can reach to me out on LinkedIn, um, you know, linkedin.com slash n slash Nakia T. Carter. Um, and there you can see um, not only my LinkedIn's company page, but the Nancy Tech company page, which will take you to the events that we have um, for the month or for each month, because we have a once a month event. Once a month. Okay. And I'll drop the links in uh, below the video. Yes. Yes. I also have another community for those folks who are on Alignable. Um, it's called a Microsoft Productivity Power Hour. Um, so I can also supply that link as well for those folks who are um, wanting to learn more about Microsoft Office 365, but might not want to get up on a Saturday for their Nancy Tech. Um, and um, we are earlier in this um the 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 presentation style is going to be different. You know, user group, you get your speakers, your speakers are speaking on different topics every month. This one's more uniform following, a, you know, a cadence until folks um, decide that they want certain topics. Then, of course, we'll branch off into those topics. But right now it's kind of following a pattern. And then we also have our YouTube channel, which I'll also um, share with you. But I believe it's also consult NTC Tech. Um, is the is the handle for it. All right. Sounds good. I will gather all those links and put them below the video. It was such a pleasure talking to you today. Yes. Same thing. Same thing Thanks. for me. Amy. Yes, absolutely.